In this video, I'm going to take you through my top 10 features that have been announced as part of the Wave 2 2022 release for Power Platform. These are all things we can expect between October of this year and March 2023. And let's get right into it here with Power Pages. <laughs> Power Pages was recently announced as the replacement for what we used to know as Power Apps Portals. This is essentially any time you need to get your data out to external customers. So Power Apps is what you're building for your organization, your license users. Power Pages is where you've got things like customer service ticketing systems where you need people to be able to log in and log data. And what we're seeing coming through in this release wave is the evolution of this fabulous new product. We've got two new templates here that are going to make it easy for you to get started. One is a permit application submission and the other one is a new employee onboarding experience. And we've also got some detail here about this new studio designer, which is one of the big advantages of Power Pages in the current version version is that this genuine low-code drag and drop experience and more features coming through there to make it easier to create those lists and grids in your website as well as simplified experience for forms and simplified experience for being able to let people upload a file when they submit their data. So all of those things getting a whole lot easier. And up next we have form components. Now this one you might you could be forgiven for missing it. This is a really important model driven app piece. It's called a form component, but essentially what this allows you to do is where you're looking at a record, a row on the screen, you can look at a related record from another table. So think about I've got a case or something like that, and I've got a related person, like the person who's linked to that. And let's say I want to go in and edit those customer details. So I've got some kind of case here and I want to say, let's see the person's details so we can see them on the screen in a read only with a quick view form. But what if you want to edit that? So the form component control has been a very sort of hidden away, not very well known piece getting an upgrade here, which is fabulous, but you'll be able to see the full thing on there, including the business process flow. Stick with me through to the end because there's some awesome stuff coming around working with related data, but I'm going to make you wait for it. In the meantime, what we've got here is some enhancements to the grid controls. So we've seen this evolve over the previous release waves. So we've now got editable grids, but more things coming through here that are going to allow even more things like nested grids and grouping. So you'll be able to sort of have things that expand out and show you things things. And the thing that I like the most about this aggregation, so you'll be able to take a column that's in that grid. So if you've got numbers in there and aggregate them up across the groups. So that's going to be a really cool thing. You'll be able to see numbers at the top of each one. Next up, Power Virtual Agents here at number seven, we have got the ability to bring adaptive cards. Check out my video here if you want some more preview of what we're going to see in the future in Power Virtual Agents. For now, adaptive cards have really only been accessible to people who know what they're doing with coding adaptive cards, it's not me. So this ability to have templated adaptive cards and have them brought right into that Power Virtual Agents experience. You don't have to go out to the Bot Framework Composer to do that anymore. So this trend of more stuff, more goodness coming for the low code makers to be able to create beautiful bots that can you know, send out these cards that have a really nice interface for the user, more accessible to everyone. Number six here, I am so so happy to see this one. It's not coming through till early next year by the look of it, but still can't wait. In Power Automate, the editor, when you choose dynamic text at the moment, you start to go in and you can click add dynamic content and it will give you a list of the other steps in the flow and the things to choose from. But honestly, I find because I work a lot with new makers, they miss, you know, like the structure of it is not super clear where they're clicking. And then the data types that are in there also, if you don't know what you're looking for, it can be a bit confusing to figure out what's what. It's getting an overhaul. Have a look at this as an image of what we're going to be seeing so much clearer and also telling you what the data type is that you're working with, which is going to be, you know, a, a way better experience. At number five, sequential approvals. So we've got approvals sitting inside Power Automate that we can use inside Teams. We can trigger them off from model driven apps. The cool new thing coming here is the ability to define multiple levels or stages in an approval process. And then if it's rejected at one stage, it won't go through to the next stage. And we can define who needs to approve it at each stage. <laughs> Everyone loves a good bit of approvals within the platform. So now you're going to be able to do that in steps and stages. At number four here, Power FX everywhere. Don't forget to give this video a like if you're getting value out of it. 
three for one here, you know what I'm like. So this is around this PowerFX expression language that is coming through. We use it to build Canvas apps, but as promised, we're starting to see it coming through in other areas of the platform as well. Model-driven apps, we will have support for PowerFX calculator columns. This has been announced a couple of times. It looks like it's getting closer now. So the calculated columns piece at the moment is sort of still a legacy piece. So being able to use PowerFX formulas in there to do calculated columns in your model-driven app it's going to give you a heap more flexibility. We've also got, and this is sitting in the Dataverse section of the release notes, business rules <laughs> using, using PowerFX. So business rules allow you to do things like show or hide columns on the page or make something mandatory or not or locked or not, those kinds of things. Again, we're going to see PowerFX coming through there, which I'm hoping will give us a lot more to work with. And not forgetting, of course, Power Virtual Agents. We're going to see PowerFX available to do conditions and logic and things within the chatbot. All of those things gives us far more greater capability. And if you haven't invested time in learning a PowerFX expression language, there are more reasons now to do so than just Canvas apps. This one, number three here. All right, the last three are always the big ones, so make sure you keep watching here. Custom pages are fully responsive. I've done a bit of work with custom pages and you do start with a blank slate and you really have to know at the moment what you're doing with those responsive containers delighted to see that that work will be substantially reduced now. We're going to get some templates in here. They'll be responsive by design, by default, out of the box. And you expect that with your model-driven app, it is fully responsive, out of the box without having to do anything. Custom pages is where we can bring this pixel-perfect design in here, and that will be fully responsive out of the box as well. So that is awesome. Now, the last two here are big, and I'm not kidding. This is around Dataverse working with data from outside. So number two here, this is all around virtual tables. So we've had the idea of virtual tables in the platform for a while, but they've been quite tricky to work with no more wizard style interface and this goes across these next two features so first up shared data across dataverse environments so let's say you're working across multiple environments but your customers are the same instead of having to replicate that data across different environments you'll be able to have that as a shared table using this virtual tables feature and then this is amazing you will also be able to have virtual tables connecting to things like sql server Excel on OneDrive and other data sources, and they will behave like Dataverse tables. So this is going to reduce a lot of need for integration because you'll be able to just connect to those things and work with them inside your model-driven app as if they were always part of Dataverse. Now, if you're working with model-driven apps and you would like to know more specifically about what's coming for that maker experience, check out my video here. Or if you're into Dynamics 365, because don't forget, they are also model-driven apps, check out my top 10 in 10 on the release wave here. Thanks for watching.